Hello and welcome. Today's video is something that's in response to a viewer question that I've gotten many times over the years. People see the number of sabers that I have or that I go through. I find them out and around. Sometimes I get them from manufacturers. Sometimes I trade for them or buy them. Uh, and then often I sell them or trade them for other sabers. And I've reviewed quite a few over the years. But people tend to ask me, what's your favorite saber? Now, that's a very difficult question to ask simply because I wouldn't, uh, I do different things with different sabers and I wouldn't want to have just one around. But I figured I'd answer it in a little bit of a broader spectrum and deal with my top 10 favorite sabers. So here in front of me, I have those sabers. I'm going to go through and talk about each one, who makes it, uh, why it's on this list. Um, but uh, here in front of me, my top 10 sabers. So let's start with number 10. Number 10 is a Flamberge crossguard saber from Ultra Sabers. Now, Ultra Sabers sabers do tend to run a little bit large, and the Flamberge is no exception. Other people do make crossguard sabers, but I consider Flam the Flamberge to be the best of the crossguard sabers currently on the market for a few reasons. First is design. Uh, a lot of other crossguard sabers, including other sabers from Ultra Sabers, have spikes and claws and hard edges. If you get a Kylo Ren make that looks like the one from the movie, it's got a little red wire that can snap off. It's got uh, sharp edges down by the pommel. Uh, and even if you find one that doesn't have sharp edges, quite often the weight of them is, uh, the, if it's smaller than this, it's light and the blade gets heavy and it's very hard to use. The Flamberge is probably the most usable and customizable of the uh, crossguard sabers on the market right now. It consists of no hard edges or, uh, or spikes or claws or anything like that. It's just this cross piece. Everything is smooth and rather streamlined. It's a little bit on the large side, but that's not too bad of a thing with a crossguard. Um, this one, they customize up nicely. This one's got a leather grip and some plating. Uh, and this one has probably one of the best pommels that Ultra Sabers makes. This large Flamberge pommel, just like the Omen pommel, is a very good counterweight and works really well with just about any MHS Saber. Uh, if you're not a fan of Ultra Sabers electronics, this Saber actually has a Makoto uh, string blade in it. But if you're not a fan with, of Ultra Sabers electronics or of any specific designs of the Flamberge, it is MHS. So as long as you keep this cross piece right here, you're still dealing with the Flamberge pieces. Now this one right here is one where just about everything else has been swapped out for stuff from the custom saber shop. But it just gives you an idea of what you can do with this nice Flamberge crossguard or crossguard section right here. All right, so number 10, the Flamberge. Number nine, the Counselor from Saber Forge. Now this is the only Saber Forge in here. Uh, I find that it kind of distills a lot of what I like about Saber Forge. Saber Forge has a much smaller size profile than Ultra Sabers. Uh, they still also have a lot of Sabers that are fairly basic and fairly easy to customize. And while they run a little bit more expensive, um, they're not quite as expensive as some of the other things, so it's a little bit easier to take liberties with them. This is the Counselor, which is one of their smaller models. I tend to prefer the Saber Forge models that are what they call the, uh, the I'm gonna call Apprentice Sabers. The ones that aren't all nice and tricked out with all the spikes and jagged edges that stay on the smaller side. The Counselor, the Disciple, even the Ronin. Um, but uh, this is a Counselor. This one has been heavily customized by Cy Waldron. Um, but gives you some idea of what you can do with Saber Forge Sabers. Their electronics, again, aren't the best, but if you don't like those, you can get them empty, install your own electronics. But the size profile and the basic structure of these things make it a nice saber to have around. This is one of my go-tos for carrying around to events so that I've got a spare saber that other people can use if they need to. Right. Coming in at number eight on my list is my Avispa Rapier Saber from Kit Sabers. Now this is a very nice saber, and it's one that I had wanted for quite a while. Uh, I had always kind of dreamed of a rapier style saber, and the, the Avispa from Kit Saber structures in or uh, factors in a lot of those design elements from the rapier saber while still keeping it futuristic enough to be a lightsaber. It kind of says light foil to me more than anything else. Uh, there's no big swept hilt, but we've got claws, uh, we've got a crossbar, we've got a got a round guard and we've got a, uh, a bell handle, gri or handle guard right here. The only reason that this thing isn't much higher on the list is the design elements of it 
make it a little bit harder to use. Um, this hand guard right here makes it difficult to do flips and hand switches with because your hand locks into it. The claws are kind of sharp and pointy and uh, make it a little bit difficult for things. It's also got rather a, rather a shallow set screw on the uh, blade. It is a very pretty saber, it is an excellent shelf clean, but it's maybe not the most usable, which is why it doesn't fall higher on the list. Coming in at number seven is a Kyberlite. Now, Kyberlite gets a lot of grief in some circles for various things. I'm not going to talk about those right now. I'm going to talk about why it's in this list. Uh, of all of my sabers, I think Kyberlite is probably one of the most versatile for customization uh, if you are not going to be intensive about grinding or, uh, or, wrap, or uh, leather wrapping things or drilling stuff. If you just want to customize with the ability to undo those changes and recustomize, Kyberlite was, or is in my mind the best way to go. The reason for that is other saber companies like Alter Sabers and Saber Forge have offered this idea, this basic you're going to have one or you can have one saber and you can make it look any different way that you want. Uh, saber Forge called theirs ASP or Adaptive Saber Parts. Alter Sabers called theirs MHS. Actually, they didn't call it MHS. Custom Saber Shop called it MHS and Alter Sabers adapted it. But um, the problem with that is Alter Sabers and Saber Forge still sell a bunch of different sabers. And they came out with this idea of you like this emitter, put it on that saber, good to go. Problem is you still had to buy different sabers to get different hilt sections. Also, they started coming out with sabers that were not MHS compatible or not ASP compatible. And there started to be more and more of those sabers with shrouds, with larger outer diameters. Uh, Kyberlite are the only ones that I have seen who have really stuck to the gun or stuck to their guns on this modular system. Kyberlite offers one saber. They've done four versions of the same exact saber. Uh, the only difference was the electronics, and the electronics are even plug and play. But it's one basic saber, and everything else is an accessory. And they've devoted their energy to coming out with different accessories, different pommels different emitters, different shrouds, but the base saber itself is one saber various combinations, which is, what they, which is what they advertise and what they have managed to deliver. So while Kyberlite has some issues with sound and electronics, it's still, it's a good price point and it's very, very adaptable, especially if you don't know what you're doing with adapting sabers. It's a good tinker saber, which is why it's on this list. All right, next up at number six, is the last Ultra Sabers in this collection. Uh, this was my very first Saber ever. This is an Ultra Sabers Dark Initiate V3. Now, I have it here representing pretty much any of the base Initiate level Ultra Sabers. And it's, it's a flashlight. I mean, it's not, uh, it's not high frill, or it's not frilly, it's not spectacular looking. It is a base design, and the reason I have it on this list and the reason I have it right about in the middle is Ultra Sabers makes, with these apprentice models, uh, or initiate models rather, to my mind, the best beater sabers on the market. They have the lowest price point for a beater saber, they have the least complicated electronics. This thing just had a four-pack of AAA batteries that I actually swapped out for one lithium-ion later down the road. I just cut it, soldered lithium-ion battery cell on it, good to go, push button, we got light. Uh, added a grip afterwards, but it was a plain tube with a couple nice choke points, uh, nice weight, very, very durable, nothing to break really, uh, nothing that can't be repaired easily. And this is my go-to saber if I'm going to be doing risky tricks, I've got things where the saber might fly out of my hand and into a tree, this is the one. This, this saber has been through hell in the last several years, and it just keeps on going doing what it does. It will never be fancy, but it is, it is functional, and I've kept it around all this time because this is the ultimate beater saber. All right, next up on the list we get to number five, uh, some of the higher end sabers. At number five, I have the Torrent from Electrum Sabercrafts. Now, the Torrent has uh, really nice design features. This thing is very similar to a Nihilus Saber, actually, um, with some of the more fluid design features, or an Old Republic. Um, the Electrum Saber Crafts, they do a single unit, or a single piece, on all of their, or most of their sabers at least, with a set screw for the pommel. 
That means there's nothing in here that you can customize beyond adding a grip or maybe etching. You can swap pommels between different Electrum Sabercrafts, but only between like the first, or only between some of their models and uh, only one pommel per model. Um, but uh, not very customizable, but a very solid design. And these things have a very ingenious, uh, cutting edge way of looking at lightsabers. Uh, the touchpad that they had here, it was a scroll up and scroll down. I've got it turned off right now. But the touchpad was a really neat feature. It's got a learning curve. It's kind of hard to get used to. And yeah, you're going to get accidental uh, lightsaber activations and deactivations with the touchpad until you get the hang of it. But the touchpad and the Bluetooth connectivity, they were one of the first to do that. Uh, very solid, very nice speed saver with the torrent. I like this one more than their Aegis model or their Evo Flow or their uh, uh, Remnant model, just because it is so smooth and uniform and it's so easy to work with. It's got it's got references for, in the saber for your hands though, so it's easy enough uh, for using with very quick saber moves. So, Electrum Sabercraft Torrent. Coming in at number five on the list is the Vader's Vault Tempest. Now, of all the sabers that Vader's Vault makes, they have a really, um, unlike uh, pretty much those polar opposite of Kyber Light, Vader's Vault has a really good reputation. Uh, a lot of positive things said about them in the market, to the point that if you say anything negative about a Vader's Vault, you should be prepared for a lot of backlash, which I experienced when I reviewed this. And I actually, surprise, said that it was not the perfect saber. It is a very nice saber, and it is high up on my list, you'll see. It's number four, uh, Vader's Vault Tempest. Now, this thing looks a lot like a fountain pen. Um, very nice, sleek design. Very small and compact. Uh, Vader's Vault, everything is really elegantly put into these things, and the Tempest is probably the most elegant of the elegant because it is the smallest size profile of any of the sabers that they make. Everything is very close together and functional in here, and there's no breathing room within this saber. Uh, it packs a lot of features. This particular one has RGB, and it's a very nice one-handed saber uh, for, for use with one hand, or if you're dual wielding, this and something like the uh, Saber Forge Counselor make a great dual wielding set. Okay, it's a little bit light, which makes the counterbalance a little bit, or makes it a little bit blade heavy when using, but very nice, sleek, elegant design. Uh, the problem with the Vader's Vault uh, is that it's, well, for one, they're a little bit more pricey than some of the other sabers. If it were really affordable, it would be much higher in the list. Uh, also, they lack some features like a recharge port, which is the biggest thing I'd like to have in here. Uh, but very nice saber, very hard to find, very much at all to say bad about this, which is why it comes in at number four. I love this thing. Smallest of the small. I can actually take this and put it through the middle of an Ultra Saber Saber, which I did in a video if you find that one. All right. Coming in at number three is the flagship Electrum Saber. This is the Electrum Sabercraft Errant. Now this lightsaber I have really high on my list because I have always loved this design. It's inspired by some swords of antiquity. It's got that touch pad I talked about earlier. Uh, this is actually from their flagship original run of 50. I think this one's 28. Uh, and it's got some custom etching on there from Ryan Heller. So this is one of the, one of the ones that I consider to be a legendary saber. Uh, it still has all of the downsides of some of the other Electrum Sabercraft saber, but the older models, you had to hit all three points of contact to scroll on and off. So while it was harder to turn on and off, it's nearly impossible to do accidentally. So I actually kind of like their older electronics. Solid single piece design. Uh, this sort of nice, reminds me a lot of a Chinese Tai Chi or Tai Chi sword, but, um, but a very nice design and very unique. Also a nice size profile. Uh, and if you're using it very fast, since there's no real references, it will start to slide in your hand, but the wings on the pommel will eventually catch. So it's very hard for this one to go flying out of your hand, even no matter how active you get. So coming in at number three, Electrum Sabercraft's Errant. Now, at number two, I have the Dark Sai, uh, Dark Saber from Kaizen Sabers. Now, Kaizen Sabers sabers are much higher end market. Uh, they're made to order, limited runs. The Dark Sai takes a while to get, 
It's designed after the Darksaber from Clone Wars and Star Wars Rebels. Uh, he does a lot of his own custom etching though, and this one has a nice Cthulhu etch to it that was basically designed to order for me. Uh, the design of this saber, the reason that I like it so much, it's very different. It's got a katana profile as opposed to being round like most sabers. It's ovoid, uh, so it's got a narrower narrower profile, one or this direction, actually much or even narrower than the, uh, than the Vader's vault at its narrowest point. Uh, it's got this handguard, so it's very good for dueling. I've seen some people in uh, Saber Legion using these things. The handguard is functional, the hilt is sturdy, uh, very, very nice usable design, uh, very high-end saber. Um, really like this one. Uh, the only issue that I have with this one is that the electronics are not secured, so when you take the kill key out with vigorous use, the whole electronics board will start to wiggle around and you'll have to realign the recharge point to put the kill key back in, but something that can be fixed with an install or a set screw of your own. Very nice, uh, very sturdy design. Number one on my list, counting as my favorite saber, if you must know, uh, is the Nihilus Unicron from Pock Store. Now, it may surprise some of you that the number one saber in my list, after I get through all these other things, this is a $500 saber. This is about a $700 saber. These are in the 300 range. It might surprise you to get to the point where I get to my number one saber and you find a stunt saber with no high-end high electronics in it. This thing has a rather ghetto plug-and-play kit that I got from Saber Forge in it uh, that's fallen apart a couple times and had to be put back or re-soldered together. But why this saber is the number one saber in my list is it is the best hilt design that I have ever seen. It's not perfect. It actually had very thin threads right here for the, where the pommel attaches. Those threads snapped when this thing flew out of my hands at one point. Uh, I reinforced it with a pipe inside. Um, I understand that their second model that they came out with doesn't have nearly as thin of threads right here. But failings aside, this design of Saber is hard to beat in terms of use. It is the fastest and most functional Saber that I have ever seen. As a matter of fact, me give you a little demo right there from an older video I shot. Now this video is not sped up, that is actual speed, and that's something that I've only found to be possible to that degree with this saber. And the reason for it is a lot of other sabers from other makers, the weight is either in the pommel or it's down, or sorry, in the pommel or up here in the emitter. This is the only one where the largest weighty section is off of the emitter. It's this grip section right here in the middle. And this is actually the closest thing to an ergonomic saber that I have ever seen. It's got a lot of points of reference. It's very, very usable, and it's very nicely weighted. Uh, this thing actually even allows me to do contact work. So my favorite saber, because of hilt design and balance, this thing allows me to do stuff that none of these other sabers would allow me to do. Still, that said, the reason I don't just have this saber is sometimes I'm not doing contact work. And I want something that's uh, want something that's a little bit more impressive or higher end. Okay, sometimes I really want to show off. Okay, sometimes I need just the right saber for just the right event, and I've got all the pieces in a box, so I just slam them together on this. All right, all these sabers have their place. Um, though this one is my favorite, most of these are things that I would not be without. So. Uh, this is my top 10 list. Hopefully that answers the user questions that I keep getting, or viewer questions I keep getting asked. Um, if you have any questions on any of these, be sure to let me know and I'll try my best to answer them as best I can. But there you have it, my top 10. Join me back next time and I'll be looking at something else.